you, buddy. Hi, guys. Well, from gorgeous Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, uh, given that it is Pride Month. It is Gay it is Pride still, Month. Still June. We're, we're, as, we're, as we speak, we're smack dab in the middle. Where's Straight Pride Month? <laughs> well, essentially... Uh, we're going to be getting to a little bit of that sentiment. We're, yes, we uh, are. Someone, interestingly someone celebrated improperly. Yes. Gay Pride Month. Yes. And so we're going to get into that yeah. a wee bit. Um, but yeah, just kind of uh, homophobia, I guess. If we're just going to tease a, th- yeah. a theme for, for, this, for the second half of the show. Yeah. Um, and so we'll, we'll dig in on that. And we will f- solve that problem yeah. at the latter half of the show. Absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. Uh, well, Dan, to start off, yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm a real proponent of uh, mass transit. Oh yes, especially things like light rail. I I, I think that you I know, thought you were going to be making a joke, but no, you genuinely I do genuinely love am. mass mass transit. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's really important. It's yes. a great way to help a city. Our city does, our build. city doesn't do a great job with it, but it, they're trying. They're improving. They're, it's it's coming along, and where and you can see where there have been successes and right. whatnot in the suburbs it's less successful correct so forth and so on but anyway uh light rail in particular uh came up at a recent uh, um, uh, phoenix uh city hall uh, they're they're in, in in arizona yeah is where, they, is where we keep uh, phoenix then they have they have like this one light rail main light rail line okay if i understand the system correctly uh and they're planning a second kind of little spur okay line sure and uh, as these things tend to do, you get people who don't like these things happening. Right. Right. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's change. Mm-hmm. People do and not I like really change. I really do think, for the most part, most of this has to do with change. Right. Now, people, business owners always freak out. They don't want yeah, the road construction the in front of their... construction can be rough. It can be rough. Right. Yeah. But... Um, a certain uh, citizen of Phoenix has uh, had some real important things to say about um, a former congressman, Ed Pastor. Okay. Uh, she got up. Uh, her name is Celia Contreras. And she she told city council members, because because I guess Pastor was like a major supporter of light rail. Okay. He did a, he did ton on, on the federal level. For just uh, to get some funding, funding, for it. Yeah. not just for Phoenix. Like he was a proponent for it happening in Phoenix, but uh, he was a proponent nationally. Oh, cool! Let's just get funding for this. Okay, we always support light rail. Right? Okay, um, and so she, the Celia Contreras, she gets up and she told city the, the council members that she was coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, good. With a message. great start, great start. Um, stop the light rail. Uh, or essentially you will be punished as Ed Pastor was punished. Uh, he, he died back in November oh. of a heart attack. Oh, she's dear. saying that, that the Lord gave him this heart attack at age 75 because he supported light rail. Wow. And the so- Lord does not like, <laughs> does not like efficient, light rail. efficient transit. No, no. Um, he, so yeah, he was given the heart attack because he was the architect of, of light rail and, uh, she warned that, uh, others would be judged if they supported it. Um, <laughs> uh, and then her little flyer that she was handing out, uh, actually had quotes from God. Oh um, God, we need to get our hands on that flyer. <laughs> I'll bet it's one of those ones that has like incredible run on sentences and probably just complete incoherence yeah but here's what god had to say about the light rail yes please. Um, i weigh their acts on a balance for those who have done wrong in advancing this project and they shall receive their pay for i am the lord almighty okay uh does she does she cite any anti-light rail scripture no 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 this is revelation that was given directly uh, okay. to her she is a prophetess yeah uh and a nimby <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Um, that would be that would be not in my backyard yes. for all of you. Out um, there. Apparently, uh, though, uh, pastor Congressman Pastor's daughter is on the Phoenix City Council. Oh shit! Whoa, oh, dick move, dick 
move. That's that's a dick move. Um, Rude. And so uh, let's see. Uh, not she... not dick move for her to be on the city council. No, dick no, move no. for, for Celia lady. Contreras. Yes. Uh, to to get up and say all this nonsense. Uh, apparently, uh, Laura Pastor just uh, got up and and left. Okay. Right. Uh, she says, "I choose not to take." Uh, or I chose not to take the message, meaning the flyer, uh, because I didn't feel that God was speaking to me. I felt at that moment that the devil was speaking to me. Okay. So Th- she... That's a really dumb thing to say. <laughs> I feel for you, lady. I mean... But that's... You were treated... it the wrong you way. You were treated badly, and that sucks. Yeah. That was a really stupid thing to say, though. Yeah. Say, uh, you know, that you don't appreciate... Yeah. ...people coming in and, and making up shit... And, and, and then... ...about and then, your father... Yeah, exactly. And then talk about the importance of improved mental health care in your city. <laughs> Cuz clearly that was needed. I just I like people who oppose these things. Like there is a way to oppose something that you don't like. Sure. There absolutely is. And that way um, is to s- say that Jesus Christ knows <laughs> has spoken directly to you. Well, it, he is the higher authority in these. This things. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you can speak with his in his voice, yeah, the world opens up to you. Yeah. If there's one thing I've heard from Pat Robertson over and over again, it's that if you speak with, if, if you if you call upon the name of the Lord, yeah, uh, you can do anything. Yeah, absolutely. Including stopping light rail light rail transit. So light rail. I know. Let's hope that let's hope that her message was heated heated. I know. Uh, you know, God God uses imperfect vessels for his message. That's, yeah, well, yeah, always. Almost always. Uh, pretty much almost every always. goddamn time. Yeah. Every time. All right. I'm going to take us, uh, speaking of municipal uh, entities or whatever, I'm going to mm. take us, we have spoken multiple times about the Chino Valley Unified School District in California, mm-hmm. uh, which they, you, the, the way that these uh, school uh the school board ran their meetings was basically akin to a christian oh uh, yeah it was it would, they yeah. would pray and they would give bible verses and it was just constant right so the freedom from religion foundation stepped in said please don't do that they continued ffrf the fufurf said uh look we're going to sue you they sued they won in lower court the uh, the uh, school district pursued it uh, and and appealed. They won. They law. Uh, they the Fufurf won again on appeal. <laughs> uh, the school district was going to take it all the way to the thing. We talked about this, and then they didn't. And then some new board members were elected and said, uh, "No, let's let this one die." <laughs> I think I think we've learned our lesson. Let's let it die. Right. Uh, well, so the caveat to this whole thing, the the thing that was uh, one one of the things that the uh, school district, the school board members, kept saying was, "Don't worry about it." Uh, a local pastor has promised to foot the bill for the legal for fighting oh, this legal fight. Okay, which we hear about a lot. There are right. a lot of organizations that promise that they're going Christian organizations, right? That promise they're going to pay. Uh, if it goes, you know, if 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 it goes south or what, whatever. Um, well, so in the lower courts, the Fufur was owed two hundred thousand dollars for their court for for their lawyer fees because if you lose this case, you have to pay the other the other right. uh, the other guy's lawyer's fees. Right. So two hundred thousand dollars. Then uh, on the appeal, they were owed about seventy five thousand uh, for. For, for the appeal right um these new people were responsible and decided not to pursue it because it would cost so much more to pursue it all the way to the supreme court yeah well uh now the group the pastor jack hibbs of Cal- calvary chapel in chino hills uh who has made it clear that he is not going to be funding any of that oh well, what changed well the dollar what, amount <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, he, he, what he changed is Bill. they lost, and he just didn't think that they would lose. Oh, no, I, I think God. so. What they claim is uh, that because they didn't pursue it all the way, 
They're oh. they're re- withdrawing their support. <laughs> dick move. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Never trust someone who who cites Jesus with your money. That's no. just a that's just the thing. So sorry, Chino Valley. You guys are going to be footing those bills. I guess uh, I guess the kids. Issue a bond. I guess the kids don't need pencils oh, this year. Yeah. Or books or so how much total were education 200 something uh 300 upward of 275 275 thousand dollars <laughs> uh just fire some teachers yeah f- fire some students fire. just get rid I mean, of the whole thing you guys clearly don't care about education period i mean as the school district it sounds like if you had your your druthers you'd just make everybody homeschool yeah is what it sounds like yeah. Sounds except like that, they got their wish. Except that the new uh, board members seem to maybe have heads on their shoulders. We'll see. <laughs> okay. We shall see. All right. Well, Dan. Yes? This is a story I sort of debated bringing up. Uh, because. I'll tell you at the end whether you made the right choice. Because it's horrifying. You made the wrong and- choice. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. Okay. Um, Hor- horrify me, baby. All right. So the here's the headline. Uh, China is harvesting organs from detainees, tribunal concludes. Let that sink in just for a little bit. We know that the Chinese government likes to uh, detain. uh, (laughs) We've talked about the Uyghur uh, Muslims recently. That's right. Uh, we've, uh, we have talked about Falun Gong in the past. Oh yeah. Uh, which is a spiritual kind of, uh, it's kind of steeped in uh, meditation. Yeah. Kind of those low, those, I'm sorry, slow movement exercise type Yeah, things. it's connected to Qigong. Yes, exactly. And yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know a lot about it, but it, but it was huge in China. It was huge, huge, huge. Like, and then they cracked down on it. Tens of millions them. of people uh, were, were starting to follow Falun Gong. I, I, I think I saw a number of 70, 70 million people yeah. uh, at one point. And then in the the late nineties, they started to sort of rally and the try Chinese to government rights. just cracked down on and them at like that crazy. moment yeah. when they started to to ask for religious freedoms and religious rights and whatnot. The Chinese government has been on a complete uh, eradication uh, agenda, agenda, or, yeah. or path or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so the this tribunal it was convened in London. Uh, the the it's called the China Tribunal. Okay, it's chaired by Sir Jeffrey Nice. Okay, yeah. uh, he was a prosecutor at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. If you remember that whole yeah, disaster, yeah, yeah. So this guy has some experience in this sort of realm. Of yeah, looking into shit and people, mass executions and whatnot sure uh well he, uh so he said in a, in a unanimous uh determination at the end of its hearings it was certain that Falun Gong as a source probably the principal source uh has been uh basically you know the, this main source of organs for forced har- uh, organ harvesting wow um uh, the conclusion shows that very many people have died incredibly hideous deaths uh, that uh, more may suffer in similar ways, and that all of us live on a planet where extreme wickedness may be found in the power of those, for the time being, running a country with one of the oldest civilizations known to modern man. Um, well, they're, they're, in fairness to them, they got a lot of people. They need a lot of organs. So, <laughs> Well, what's interesting, and one of kind of the, the telltale signs uh, that, that they kind of has got people kind of wondering yeah uh is that waiting times for transplantation uh is really short (laughs) yeah uh it just it 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 just doesn't make sense uh transplants are usually available within just a couple of weeks huh uh which yeah i guess when you when you when you look at your prisons and all you see is an organ farm Mm -hmm. uh i guess that's the thing uh they're 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 confident very confident that Falun Gong is is falling prey to this action. Uh, there is less evidence about the treatment of uh, Tibetans, Uyghur Muslims, and some Christian sects, but they do suspect that uh, this that, that they are also harvesting organs uh, from these groups. Um, wow. And so they the story, and this is in the Guardian. 
right? So mm. a pretty good source of news. Yeah. Uh, the Guardian did some nosing around. They talked to a Falun Gong um, activist uh, who was in prison for a year in a female labor camp. Um, she also gave evidence to the China Tribunal. And she said that while imprisoned, uh, they were subjected to repeated medical checkups and blood tests. Oh. Um, she said, on the day we were transferred to the labor camp, we were taken to a medical facility where we underwent physical checkups. We were interrogated about what diseases we had, and I told them I had hepatitis. I don't know if she actually had hepatitis or not, but that was smart to say. Yeah. Uh, the second time, about after about a month in the camp, everyone was handcuffed and put in a van and taken to a huge hospital. Uh, that was for more thorough physical checkups. We were given x-rays on the third occasion in the camp. We were, uh, they were drawing blood from us. We were told to line up in the corridor and the tests were given. Uh, she, they suspect that this was uh, part of a medical selection process. Yeah. I mean, clearly, why else were they just constantly testing? Oh, yeah, because the Chinese government is so concerned about their prisoners' health and well-being. Exactly. They, yeah, let's, let's right? Let's do complete run-ups on, yeah. on oh, everybody. We, we yeah. really should know what's going on with you. Let's. Uh, when was your last sexual partner? <laughs> uh, she said uh, inmates of the labor camp uh, were not allowed to exchange contact details, so there was no way to trace each other after we were released. When anyone disappeared from the camp, I would assume that she was released and gone home. Right. But in reality, that cannot be confirmed as I have no way to trace others after my release. And I now fear uh, that they may have been taken to a hospital and had their organs removed without consent and thus killed in the process. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, China. Holy cow. <laughs> this is th and this is this is a, a level of uh, religious persecution and and that's that's why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. Of course, I mean this is systematic and 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 horrifying. And on, on a truly like yeah. truly just for their their conviction um, of belief, they're being uh, targeted as you know yeah as as just organ bags. It's funny because you and I are so. Uh, I would say we're both pretty anti-religion. We're pretty. Mm -hmm. We. I. I. I don't think Absolutely. either of us uh, thinks that it's a net good for anybody. No. Really. No. Uh, however, people are going to have their beliefs and whatever. Yeah. It is funny because my next bill, my my next story, we may be on the same track. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where you're going to land on it. But it is funny when we're forced to defend the religious. When we're horrified. By the acts of an atheist government, yeah, uh, against its religious believing, a horrifying government, yeah, a truly horrifying government, uh, like absolutely, their crimes against humanity are just racking up. In, indeed, yeah, and, th yeah, and 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 and, and it's, it's bringing me to this point of like, there's just this looming question over me of like, when are we, the West, the United States? Mm -hmm the west when are we going to do something about this well what can what can we do about we're going to do something about it when we don't have a president who calls it china because <laughs> currently all he cares about is his little <laughs> trumped up trade war yeah. his little pretend trade war I that know. he that he, he gets to fight a trade war that doesn't exist yeah so there you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's see. Where China's you, bad. So China. So so. Okay. China's bad. That's yeah. that's good. Um, Quebec may also be bad. Oh, we shall see. Oh, oh, oh. I, I I saw this headline. Yeah. So here's the deal. Quebec passed Bill 21. Yeah. Uh, the, recently, Bill 21 basically says that no person who works for the province is allowed to uh, wear any religious symbols yeah. at all. Yeah. Now, we've had some similar discussions, some discussions that are like this. Right. And a lot of secular people are very into this idea, very happy with this idea <sighs> of banning... S because, now here's what I understand. Here's what I get. Yeah. There is a problem. If you go into a county clerk in Alabama... And you are a Muslim, and someone's wearing a cross around their sh their neck. It would be a very reasonable thing to think. 
I'm not going to get a fair shake from this person. I'm not going to be treated fairly. Right. And so there is this sense of like, and also, you know, if I'm sending an, you know, if you're sending an atheist kid to school and their teacher is wearing a, you know, a cross every day. Right. You could start to feel like "Mm, maybe some indoctrination is happening. There's something a little spooky about it. However, and that's what they're trying to combat. They're trying to combat this idea that like they're trying to get to the state is as an entirely uh, religious religion neutral environment. Right. Right. It's secular. It is. There's no we are not. There's no religion practiced in how we practice our jobs. Right. And that's important. That's absolutely vital. Right. But to not leave room for people's deeply held religious beliefs, you know, it, you know, if a, if a Jewish man feels that he must wear a kippah to be, to you know, to to be in compliance with his God, or if a Muslim women, woman, and most people are pretty sure that this is just about hijabs, right? That's what this this is an anti hijab bill, right? Why is this coming up now? Yeah. Right. So, but you know. This, that's not hurting anybody. That's not professing anything to anybody. You know, if that same woman is wearing a hijab and prof- and and telling people that come up to her line in the, you know, at the Department of Motor Vehicles, telling them that they need to convert to Islam, that's a problem. That's a problem. But if she's just wearing No, and and you know, there are there's blurry lines because just wearing a cross around your neck, no Christian in the world believes that their God has commanded them to wear a cross around their neck. Yeah. And see, that's, that's where it does get a little tricky. Yeah. Right. Because it, it, if you are allowing somebody who feels a mandate, mm-hmm. right. And not just a mandate, a fucking requ- like a true requirement. Right. Like, this is, she can, she has to wear this thing. Right. Right. Or a Sikh person wearing their, uh, their turban. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, but you're, but you are correct. In uh, in Christianity, there 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 aren't a lot of those things. Right. There are certain sects that have some things, like the 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 uh, what are the Anabaptists with the or the German Baptists, whatever they're called. With, with the, their and little, the, the women will have a little bun. The, little, their hair yeah. will be in a bun, and there's like this little like bun carport that they <laughs> put on their the back of their a head. little cheesecloth that they put over it. <laughs> Just keeps it smelling fresh all day. <laughs> so. But, but, and 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 that's a requirement. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah the Mormons it, have the good sense to hide their important uh, clothing yeah. under the rest of yeah. their clothing. But 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 yeah. So it's like, well, what do you what do you do? Do you allow the 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 cro- the, 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 the the necklace? Right. Just cause because you're giving it to these other people you're right. letting them have wear their thing right right so and where if do you, a christian really wants to make a point and wear their cross because she gets to wear her her job right and if she wears the cross then why can't she wear her i love jesus and so should you t-shirt there's a line that has to be drawn there there yeah and i think it's before they get to it's a, it's before the messaging. t-shirt there's it's, no messaging right allowed. it's yeah exactly it's definitely after, I mean, it's after a Sikh has to take off his turban. That needs to be allowed. And before a woman can wear her Jesus is my co-pilot t-shirt. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Um, yeah, I don't know, Dan. I, I'm so conflicted on this one. There, there, was, there was probably a subconscious reason why I didn't pick up this article <laughs> no I, I, I mean i didn't because i saw it and right. i was like oh wow there's you know a continuation of that saga and a, actually a res- resolution on this saga yeah a decision made and so but i didn't want to go near it and it's probably because I, i'm just it's not easy i'm i'm conflicted i feel like anyone uh, who thinks that this is an easy answer one yeah. way or another yeah probably hasn't thought deeply enough about it because it's not easy. No. There a line must be drawn. Yeah. And where that line is drawn is tricksy. I do think they, I feel like they've it, got they've gone way too far. Well, and it feels to me it feels like oh god, I don't want to say it's the easy line to draw. Just nothing. Right. Right. Because that's it cuz it's you don't arrive to that decision easily either. But like it does seem to not be in the right place to me, and I, but I, uh, but I, 
I don't know where else to put it. And I think that that's yeah. what, where, where I kind of run into a problem. Well, you could say religiously mandated clothing is, of a, is allowable. Mm-hmm. But then you're going to have somebody who's like, you know, my dreadlocks and my, you know, slumpy clothes are, are well, part of my Rastafarian religion or whatever. And then you, or you have some, you know, some uh, <laughs> clever local pastor right. who's like, you are all, I command you all to wear their cross. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky, but you know, it. you got, I, I feel like if you're living in and, and the point, you know, it's a multicultural land. It is a place. Uh, it is not a monoculture. Uh, I know. And if you and if you I want know. that and encourage that, and Canadians tend to want that, they and, and Americans should, but Canadians tend to do a little better at it, uh, except for Alberta, obviously. Uh, if you want that <laughs> multicultural, I'm just teasing. If you want that multiculturalism, you uh, you have to be able to make some space for it. You got to make some room. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's all I'm saying. And yeah, and your monoculture can't just be secularism. No, I, because it, that's not that's not a pluralistic society. You're not acknowledging right. the society that you exist in, right? And I think that these rules. Ugh. I mean, the government has to be secular. Yes, to run to run well, uh, yes. the government absolutely has to be secular. I'm not saying, but the people who work in the government don't have to be secular because they're not. They're humans. They're right. not part of. They're not. Uh, you know, they're not part of the institution. I, work I just always you. feel like that a secular society. Maybe I've. I'm thinking of pluralism. I'm thinking of multiculturalism. I guess more than secularism. Yeah, it's important. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know where I stand, Dan. Anyway, all right, cool. Okay, uh, let's move on. I know where I stand on this one, Dan. Yeah. Um, drag bingo, <laughs> drag queen bingo. Right. <laughs> this is a thing. Oh, I've this done it. Fun thing. I've been there it's many great. times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania. There's a, a a county in Pennsylvania where drag queen bingo has been going on. Sure. Um, and uh, they've they've been doing fundraisers for the local fire department. Great. Isn't that great? Cute, right? Uh, well, some uh, local pastors are outraged. Uh, of course they are. They have written a letter, a stern letter to the local fire departments, encouraging them to not do this anymore. Don't, don't accept their money. Get this, Dan. Yeah? The gall of these people. In this era of the Me Too movement, the last thing we wanted any of our fire departments to experience would be a potential situation where an individual might have felt unwanted advances and then be, and then we certainly didn't want to see any of our local fire departments have to defend themselves against a potential lawsuit. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> He's trying to like take I, me to, yeah. like, be like, people are reacting. I, people are uh, reacting to like, physical touch and like oh my god blah, blah, blah. and it's like w- wait what it literally is the case that almost all of these homophobic pastors or whatever mm-hmm. in their minds they cannot separate the concept of being gay uh-huh. from just lustfully launching themselves at anyone who who happens to be around right well in this letter i guarantee um, you that particular pastor is going to be arrested in two months for molesting <laughs> one of their pa- parishioners. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, he wrote uh, in this uh, letter that drag queen bingo encourages touching, groping, and fondling. Does and, it? And he adds that uh, he How added fascinating. that men and women may f- feel pressured to accept the advances. Oh. I mean, I've never been to that drag queen bingo. Yeah. But, um, no. Nah, Man. That's not what happens. Yeah. That's not how that goes. And even if it was kind of a racy little show. Sure. And then, you, you're, you know what you're getting you're, yourself yeah. into when you go to Drag Queen Bingo. Right. Especially if that's what that one is all about. I don't know that it is. It just sounds like this guy is making shit up. Well, yeah. This guy has not been there. This yeah. guy is not. Maybe no, he, clearly not. He mm-hmm. heard one story or right. something. Uh, uh, so uh, local uh, drag queen Jeff uh, Kaczynski, also known as. Lisa Lips. Yeah. Um, he, he performs with uh, the Sparkling Queens of Drag, 
uh, and they are they're um, scheduled to perform at the Calumet Volunteer Fire Department's fundraiser on July 20th. Uh, Kaczynski said that their show is in, it's all in good fun and it's profitable for these fi- uh, volunteer fire departments. Yeah. Uh, he says that there are a couple uh, departments that have raised $23,000, $28,000. Sure. Uh, he says it depends on the crowd and when the crowd comes, they're, you know, they know they're not just getting bingo. They're getting entertainment. Yeah. And it's fun. Everybody and loves it. Everybody except has a good time except one for grumpy uh, pastor. Pastor Mark Werner. Oh. Oh, Park Mark Werner. Oh. Nah. His life is so hard. Oh. When will the drag queens love me? When will the firemen? <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what's on Mark Werner's mind. Oh yeah. 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 Mm. He's only he can only imagine, you know, these drag queens and the firemen. Like it's just too much for him. Yeah. Like he he his he's just like his brain just short circuit. Too his objection to drag to drag is probably just that they that that they then look like women and he's only attracted to the men. (laughs) Take off those clothes. How dare you? I liked you better when you looked like a man. Like a man. Exactly. Take off that makeup. Now take off that shirt. Now keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to tell us about. There's a a, a Muslim comedian named Deem, Dean Dean Obadala. Okay, who uh, who he has a podcast. He's done, he, you know he's got a bunch. He's got a radio show on Sirius and stuff. He's a hmm. fairly prominent comedian. All right, uh, wrote a little uh, op ed after. Do you, do you remember that uh, an Ariana Grande concert in uh, 2017 was bombed and a bunch of people oh, yeah, were killed? Oh, yeah, 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 Well, this guy wrote a, an op-ed called uh, – oh, I don't know what it was called. Anyway, he wrote an op-ed sort of taking Trump and his ilk to task, basically mm-hmm. saying, you know, this is – we you know, it doesn't matter who did this. It's white Christian males are the real terrorists of this era. Right. Something along those lines. Those were my words, and I believe them. Anyway, um, the so there was backlash, and it, you know, this was 2017, so things were hot in this country, if you'll recall, in terms of like, you know, Ob- or uh, Trump had just been uh, installed as president, and oh yeah, everybody was f- all, all the right wing was insane. the The neo Nazis were out yeah. like in droves. They felt newly emboldened, right? And a website called the Daily Stormer. Have you heard of that? I have. Uh, which is a neo Nazi sort yeah. of uh, well, alt right uh, yeah. uh, propaganda mm-hmm. website. Yeah, posted a bunch of news stories. Those are in scare quotes. Of uh, about this guy, uh, and this was their their mo, right? Anyone who attacked their people, they just went on the attack. And what they did was they accused him of masterminding that bombing. They said that they had proof that he was uh, connected with ISIS. They fabricated tweets that he hadn't done, uh, and all oh of God. this stuff. Well, wh- I think what they didn't know was that he's a former lawyer. Oh boy! Uh, and he sued them. He didn't represent himself, but he right. sued them. But he knew he well understood his rights. Right? Yes. So he sued sued them for libel. Yeah. Uh, the, he was just awarded a four point one million dollar defamation. Uh, Fantastic. Thing. So that's great. Wow. Uh, there is one negative cov- negative uh, mo point to to make which is that the the website's founder andrew anglin uh did not chose not to defend himself uh didn't show up and oh. nobody knows where he is oh <clears throat> so we, who knows what's going to happen I, it costs 17 dollars a month to keep a website up you know what i mean a website like that up and he can do it from probably anywhere so I I don't have a lot of hope that this guy's going to get uh, his money, but I definitely think uh, this sends a chill down the spine of anybody who wants to defame the character of people just because, just cause, just yeah, just because they they politically disagree with them. Yeah. 
But there you go. Wow. Uh, a lot of fun to harass uh, the Jews and the Muslims, apparently, out in the, these United States. Good Lord. But uh, it will cost you. Yeah. Hopefully. $4.1 million. Yeah. That's, the, that's how much it costs. That should be, yeah. That, let it be known. Yeah. There are other uh, lawsuits pending, by the way, against the Daily Stormer. Oh, fantastic. Good. Uh, including an, an, an American university student who uh, is seeking $1.5 million. Wow. Um, for is allegedly inciting harassment against her because these people, what they do is they dox somebody, yeah. and then encourage harassment. Yeah, it's go horrible. get them. Yeah, go get her. It's wretched. It's uh, it's disgusting, and it needs to stop. And I hope more and more and more people get held accountable for it. Absolutely. So there you go. All right. Well, Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, we're in the middle of. Uh, something of a, a drive. We're in the middle of a a drive. A is that what we want to call it? I don't know. Uh, a campaign? A campaign. We're asking for your support. Here's, a, here's Dear the deal, listeners, you guys. Uh, we, we've heard you. You don't like the ads that we run. Yeah. And we, we don't, don't like the ads. We, we, I mean, nothing against our advertisers. Every, I, no. every now and then we get one. We don't choose our ads. And every now and then we <laughs> get one that we're like, during, in 2016, Trump ran some ads on our show. Yeah. And that wasn't us, and people got very upset. Right. We would just as soon be entirely listener supported. Yeah. And it's a that, much better position. That is our us. goal. Yeah. So we've decided that we want to work toward you guys being our sole support. Right. Uh, and the way that we can do that is for you to uh, become a supporter. You go to thankgodimatheist.com mm-hmm. and you click on. There's a banner right on that front page. There's a banner off to the right-hand side. You can just click on that, and yeah. that'll take you straight to the Patreon. Or you go to patreon.com slash, what is it? Thank God I'm atheist. TGIA. I'm, I'm about to find out, but you keep talking while I <laughs> find out what it is. Because I'm going to. Yeah, and what, what you'll find on, on, on the Patreon page, you're going to find levels of support, uh, rewards that 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 uh, come for supporting us at the, at those levels. Yeah, uh, some of those include things like an ad free uh, version of the show, which is obviously going to become a moot point. But you can get yourself there but now. Yeah, you'll you're ahead of the curve. You yeah. already get the ad free um, version of the show. You know, and then then the the, the access to the uh, uh, Frank and Dan diaries, a yeah. weekly blatherthon that that we do uh, before <laughs> very, the show. Very, it's kind of no, no, kind very good quality, high quality <laughs> stuff. <laughs> we essentially to record our our warm up. <laughs> um, and then give it to you guys, and uh, and and it's usually has nothing to do with any of the topics that we were talking about that week on the show. So yeah. it's it's kind of nice. This week's got to uh, uh, it included Cheetos, not uh, Cheetos, Fritos, uh, Fritos, uh, asparagus. We talked then about uh, hang gliding to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. somehow that got us to hang. Gliding we'll get to, to work. we look. You're going to get some seriously good content <laughs> for free. Uh, that's just We just give that to you uh, at a certain level. We've also set it up as, uh, as a campaign, right? There, there, we have some goals that we've set to help us get there. Essentially, when, as we hit these goals, uh, one quarter of the ads are going to go away. Then half the ads will go away. Uh, then we hit, when we hit the third benchmark, three quarters of the ads will go away. And then when we finally hit... The, this goal of having 350 uh, patrons, sub- patrons uh, we will turn off ads entirely, and uh, and we'll yeah. we'll go from there. So uh, so and, yeah, and, if, and it, it'll if be it, an amazing day. If it has ever occurred to you that you know a dollar an episode is something you can afford, yeah, uh, and something you're willing and 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 able and desire to do, you can pause this show right now. And you can go to uh, thankgodimatheist.com and just click on that thing on the right-hand side yeah. and become a supporter. Yeah. And we love you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Hey, if you'd like to be a, uh, email us about any of the stories that you've heard so far, you can do so by going to uh, by, by emailing. You use the email address. Emails. Which is emails at email dot email. <laughs> or podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist. Click on that like button. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge or request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in.
Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. There's a big trend in food right now. Oh, yes. It's uh, this whole plant-based- Eat the rich. Meat- Oh, you're just- alternatives. Okay. Alternatives. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you might have heard of th- things like the Impossible Burger- Yeah. Or the Beyond Burger. Uh, some of these products are like national fast food chains yeah. now. Um, it's just burgers that aren't made- areas, but they're, they're, they're trying to get it out there. They're plant-based. Right? They're plant-based. And- to be honest, fairly convincing. Not bad. Yeah, actually, I, the flavor, they're, flavors they're are meaty. Nice. They're um, they're savory. They're they're good. They're, it's they're... the first time because yeah. believe me, I have tried some vegan food, and I really, <laughs> I'm not a dirt jerk about it. Yeah. But uh, and all of your meat substitutes have sucked so yeah. far. I've and and when I was a vegetarian, I always preferred things that just that didn't purport to be meat. Right. They were just I, their own. And thing. I still love a good garden burger. Sure. Right? Absolutely. Like a nice little veggie patty of some kind. It's not trying to be meat. This stuff is trying to be meat. And it's good. But And, it, and it's pretty good. But, but there's a problem. Uh, and Pastor <laughs> Rick Wiles. <laughs> he knows exactly what this problem is. And he's going to tell us all about it. When you go to your favorite fast food restaurant, you're going to be eating a fake hamburger. You're going to go to the grocery store and buy a pound of fake hamburger or a fake steak. And you won't know that it was grown in some big corporation's laboratory. This is the nightmare world that they're taking us into. They're changing God's creation. Why? Because they want to be God. They want to do exactly what Lucifer did before the flood. It's why God destroyed it. He said he regretted that he ever made mankind because they were destroying his creation. The Bible says God is coming back to destroy those who are destroying the earth. So God is an environmentalist. He takes this very seriously. He created this planet. He created the universe. And he's watching these Luciferians destroy his planet, destroy the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, change human DNA. Why? They want to change human DNA so that you can't be born again. That's where they're going with this, to change the the DNA of humans so it will be impossible for a human to be born again. They, They want to create a race of soulless creatures on this planet. I'm sorry? I'm sure you all followed I, that completely without any trouble. Uh, I you, beg your, I what <laughs> he has made, a, what he has made, a, a absolutely foolproof, concrete arguments. Uh, you can't deny it well, when he all, puts it that way. I think he thinks <laughs> that there's some sort of fake cow that's yeah. being grown, that's being slaughtered, well, to get this meat. I and think does, what does, he, does he not understand that this is all just like it's, that? It's plant based. It's just a plant based food. I think because they were working on growing real meat, like actual, like oh, hu- yeah. like 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 not human, actual like. Although, although yeah, it's, it's it's the sweetest nectar, the human <laughs> the human body. Uh, no, but they were yeah they have been working on lab grown meat. Yeah, that's not what this is. That is not what this is. Yeah. Also. So what if it is? Yeah. What are you talking about? You didn't have a cow suffering. It's, yeah, exactly. You're not or like you're not supporting what? the 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 flatulence cows flatulating us into oblivion because right. of our our uh, global warming and whatever. What the fuck, man? But God's an environmentalist. What? Listen, this hey, first man. Of all, <laughs> oh my god. And somehow, th- I think what he thinks is happening is that they're taking plants changing the dna until they're animals and then making that making the meat out of that i think like i really genuinely think that's what that's what he thinks is happening there's this little flower and then a, a cow starts to form yeah exactly it, it, and and i don't know if you've ever seen a cow wow. plant but it is mm. horrifying i don't know a steak plant could be pretty good yeah that could be lovely there's this big meaty like bleh. and then and then he gets to the human DNA thing. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. What so the so fuck that you can't are you be born about? again. This is just. I mean, I know this man is 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 a lunatic. Yeah, I know he 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 is de totally derailed half the time. 
But at a certain point, I just have to believe that he knows he's making some of this up just to rile people up. But, like, also, who's so fucking gullible to think that, like, the scientists are trying to create a race of humans that the Lord's uh, uh, re- redeeming powers, whatever this nonsense is, right. can't reach them. They've, yeah. they've built a, 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 a Jesus defense shield around this race of human beings. Right. And, and, and they can't be subject to, to, to the atonement or whatever. Right, yeah. What the just, fuck is wrong with this? I want to know how much we have to change the human genome before God goes, I don't know what that is. That's not, I can't, that can't be born again. I don't know what that is. The sooner the better. Right? <laughs> At least in there. Well, no. Ugh. Oh my God. Lunatic. Uh, I, that was, he's a of, lunatic. But that was delightful. I, it literally, like, he, he has didn't no grip make, on reality. He didn't make a lick of sense from, Point A to point B. I mean, more and more and more, he is the old man on the corner. <laughs> in his, like, La- yeah, later he's going like to be complaining about the kids. Don't wear sweaters. They're Satan's tool against you. This don't. Everybody needs to stop using plastic cups because that's where the demons come in. And by the way, <laughs> pretzels are Satan's <laughs> toothpicks. I don't know. Hmm. That's interesting. Anyway, we had some uh, some folks write into us, call yeah. into us. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah, should yeah. do some some of that. Hey, Lance ca- wrote in and said, "Hey, Frank and Dan, I found out about your podcast two months ago." Yeah, hey, Frank, Frank, welcome, Frank. You're not ready for what he's about to say. Oh no! And I just finished all of the backlog today. In two months, what have you been doing? <laughs> are we you do okay? Not encourage this, Lance. Are you okay? <laughs> I am very concerned about Lance. You need more life than that. <laughs> we love you, but my God, man. Anyway. Well, uh, Lance might be rehabilitating from something. Well, he might had a lot of time on his hands. I bet I bet his he, he was in traction or something. <laughs> okay. We'll just. That, no. that, that's my prediction for Lance. But uh, yeah, anyway, please. He, he, says, oh. he says, I'm all cut up. You'd think that, living in rural Missouri, all the gays around here would have been long ago fed up with churches. Not so. Oh. In fact, at least half the guys out here are still religious. Frank, I don't know how you found one, but congrats. I assume he means a boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you. I don't know how you found a boyfriend either. I know. I'm I'm not very lovable. (laughs) He says, thank you guys for not only being a source of atheism when there isn't any around me Mm. in at least a three-hour radius... Hmm. But for not hiding from LGBTQ plus topics uh, while not having that be your whole identity hmm. is something sorely missing out here. So hmm. it, uh, so if you can just record five or six hours a day so I can keep going at this pace, <laughs> uh, that'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> well, oh. Lance. Get well soon, God Lance. God bless you, Lance. We- <laughs> Whatever it is you're recovering from, yeah. get well soon. And no, we're not going he to be doing that. Listening at work. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, howdy, Lance. That's some commitment. Yeah. And you know what, Lance? I, I do want to say, look for some atheist meetup groups. I'll bet there's some closer there might than be you something. think. Yeah. Uh, and, yep. and, and, you know, I think, I think there may be some, yeah, some, somebody out there because we're everywhere. We're, yeah, we are. Most, uh, most atheists in the more rural areas don't, don't yeah. speak it loudly to people, but. Find yourself a gay atheist. Go get yourself because a- they're out there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go find one. They're there. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, uh, dear Frank and Dan, this is from Jim. Regarding the Good Friday story from Canada and the listener mm. uh, from New Zealand who oh. discussed their similar law. Remember, this was a law where uh, in Canada <laughs> a store was required to be closed on Good Friday. Yeah. Uh, this and, is mind-boggling. Yeah, uh, he's uh, Jim says uh, it. Uh, is is all that silliness really any different from the federal holidays we have in the U.S., yeah. specifically Christmas Day? Yeah. Uh, while yeah. while not mandated in the private sector, these are designated as legal public holidays by the United States Congress. Uh, try mailing a letter or renewing a passport on Christmas. Regardless yeah. of your religion or lack thereof, by mandate of the U.S. federal government, it yeah. will not be allowed. Good point. Uh, this is clearly a government endorsement. 
not only of religion in general, but of Christianity in particular. And he goes on to say that he'd like to see the FFRF take it up. That's a. Ooh. I don't think the FFRF is is ready for that battle yet. Yeah, that takes some. That's gonna take some time. Some uh, yeah, deep pockets. Yeah. Well, but, and uh, and also they would just it would just be uh, thrown right out. The end of the FFRF. <laughs> the public outcry where we so loud our society is unfortunately not ready for that lawsuit yet we'll get but there. it does seem like see this is where the satanic temple needs to come in uh-huh right they need to start lobbying for a for a some federal satan holiday yeah why not <laughs> sure or something along the or or you know like why why is it only that the christian holidays have ever yeah, hit the the, the calendar. Like, yeah. why why don't we have a national holiday that's a Jewish holiday yeah. or, or a Muslim holiday? Happy Ramadan, that. everybody! Sorry, yeah. the stores are closed, and it ro- it rotates around. Now, mind you, in the U.S., we don't require stores to be closed. No, they just it and so it's cultural. It is so different. Some stores do close. There's the expectation, but, but it's their choice. The, and that's the, a, uh, a, an important difference. And it's a it, like there's just the best excuse to be closed. Oh yeah, right? and I, like businesses that are open most days of the week don't like to just randomly close for in an, in an unpredictable way. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's it's tough to close for other holidays. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I get it. Uh, but let's get them all done. Let's just let's let's cut them all out. I I, I like it. I think it's a long way off, but I support it. Yes, indeed. The 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 Get eliminating of, of all of yeah. That's the war on Christmas, man. Yeah, we're yeah. Well, that's exactly. the real war on Christmas, and it's coming, Christians. <laughs> the war <laughs> on Christmas is watch coming. Back. Uh, all right, we, well, we, we had a, a <laughs> voicemail, right? Oh, I, <laughs> if you if Frank survives whatever he was just choking <laughs> on. He can play as a voicemail. Yeah, here we go. Um, here's another listener with. Uh, uh, some perspective on uh, the the issue of abortion, yeah, uh, that has come up recently on the show. Yeah, and we had a listener being out. Yeah, the, we had abortion. a listener call in and ask, uh, or, or write in and ask if she if if she has some sort uh, an obligation to uh, to come out as having had an abortion, or or yeah, or if there would along be any, the lines, if there would be any sort of benefit, right? Sort of in in, in the vein of like a, 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 the coming out of of gay people and, and right. And the importance of coming out as an atheist, if, right. if you can. So here we go. Hi guys, I'm calling in um, regarding to the abortion. Um, exactly what you were saying. I did have an abortion, and I just had a couple of people that know me and that are a little bit scared about the whole abortion thing because of the stuff that they get said by um, you know by these right wing people here in the south. And they were shocked that a normal, somewhat nice girl like me would have had an abortion and, and not regret it. But I don't regret it. I have one child. I did one another one. There was some other stuff going on, but I, I'm really done with trying to make an excuse for it. In the end, I didn't want the kid, and I had an abortion that was it. All right, just wanted to share that. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, and that's. That's it. Right? That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, and I under we understand how scary it could be or whatever. But yeah. I think the voice of of the women having the abortion is largely missing mm-hmm. from the dialogue. Yeah, the people that are in the that are talking about it are a bunch of white <laughs> men trying to trying to regulate uteruses, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, a bunch of and then like. Planned Parenthood, right? But the providers, vo- yeah, providers, yeah. exactly. But Healthcare we provi- we need to women's health. Providers. I think I think the the voices of the women who have uh, who are who are safe and who have the that kind of bravery, yeah, we need to hear them because I think the narrative is so easy for them to control about yeah. you know women are always reg- they always regret it and it's always right. this terrible experience or whatever and m- most women that's not the case most women who have abortions. Are like this woman. They they they've had a child. Mm-hmm. Like m- the majority of abortions are women who are already parents, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, they know how awful it is, right? <laughs> right. They- they've they've learned their lesson. <laughs> like, no more. Oh my God, no! <laughs> Get out. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, but yes, yeah. more. I think more women telling their stories is I, is awesome. Uh, God, it feels like that's got to be 
a next step. And I mean, two white guys saying it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, like <laughs> take what we're saying and make sure that you take it to heart, everybody. <laughs> our our opinion is more important On than the yours. Issue of abortion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're like taking all these white guys to task for their you. You stay out of her her business. Right. And, Ours is more of encouraging yeah. women, though, to have a voice right. and, and to have a powerful voice. And if we can amplify and, that voice, then... Yeah, and, and I, I, I'd yes, like to do that. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. We have one more email from Bart. I just wanted to read this real quick. Hi, Frank oh, okay. and Dan. I did exactly what you said. I paused the podcast and became a patron. <laughs> now back to the show. <laughs> Damn, Skippy. And a bunch of people have done that. Yeah. Uh, and we have some thanking and to we do. We do have some thanking to do. Um, bear with us. Yeah. I don't know if there's a good format for doing this. We don't have one established. Um, but we have 20 people to thank. Woo! Which just, is... Just plow through. Boy, howdy. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, you ready? Brace uh, yourself. Brace I yourself, am, Dan. I'm okay, ready. Here we go. I'm braced. Okay, these are the new faithful listeners. Okay. They're coming in at $1 an episode. And that is awesome. Okay, so we have Jack, Crispy Patopolis. I said that poorly. T. <laughs> Uh, Sinjin, Brent, Kevin, Michael, turn the page, uh, Ross, Anon, Ron, and Cindy. Wow! You guys, amazing. Thank all of you. Let's keep going. What, what, now what do we got? We have new venerable listeners. These are people coming in at the $2 an episode level. Damn, you guys. This is, uh, we've got Laura, Warren, Page. Uh, Catherine and Cody. It is clear, you guys, that we are not prepared for this much love. <laughs> and know, I amazing. love it. You guys are Absolutely awesome. Amazing. So thank all of you guys. Who's next? Uh, the Beatified listeners. These are people uh, giving $3 an episode. Okay. Uh, we have Bart. And I think there was one other on this list. There is uh, Skipper Marie. Skipper Marie! Woo-hoo! You guys. We have more to thank. I know. We it's ha- amazing. <laughs> thank you. Just keep it coming. Thank you, thank you so far. I, I feel um, like I'm showering in love. Go, 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 go. Bring it on, um, baby. A new saint. Ooh. Saint. So. I, I, okay. I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Gesundheit. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> you know who you are? Thank you. You're a new saint. Yes. Okay. And then we have. I love that you've tripped up Frank like that. That's amazing. <laughs> and then we have two new popes. Oh, wow. Uh, we have uh, Pope. Atropo. Okay. Atropos, maybe? Um, And then uh, Pope Stacy. Wow. Probably the first Pope Stacy. Yes. Uh, You are all stunning human beings. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then. And you're rocketing us towards our goals. Yeah, it's. We're we're getting there way quicker than I would have dreamt possible. It's amazing. That's awesome. Um, And then, of course, uh, we have our. uh, uh, Well, actually, not. Of course, because we have a new Lord and Savior. Oh, we have. Uh, We've retired our old one. Uh, the, the the jersey is now hung up in the stadium. Much thanks, much so thanks much to, uh, to Josh. But we now have a new Lord and Savior, Hannah. Holy Hannah, you are the Lord and Savior of the podcast. <laughs> well done, Holy Hannah. Uh, you are, and thank you so much to all of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not been uh, had the thrills and chills of being thanked and feeling the the appreciation from Frank and Dan. Yeah. You can get it. Yeah. All you got to do is go to thankgodamatheist.com, click on that uh, that thing on the side of the page and uh, you're you're there. Yeah. It's good. You're good to go. So thanks so much guys. Dan. Yes sir. Uh, gay y- bashing. You, my friend, mm-hmm. and I'm horrified to say it, were hate crimed. I was hate crimed. No, you were gay bashed. I wasn't even. Ga- <laughs> it wasn't a really crime. Well, because in the state of Utah, it's not a crime. No, no, it's, but it's not a hate crime. No, and I don't know that. It, is that that's not a gay bashing? I wasn't beaten. No, no, but you were. You were. I was. Um, you were verbally assaulted. I was. Uh, it was more like a verbal... Someone, someone was a dick. Somebody was a dick. We're going to just say somebody was somebody a dick was a to dick Frank. At a downtown Salt Lake City supermarket. At the Shishi one. Yeah. 
We're just mind at the fancy. Yeah, Dave and I are just minding our own business. Neither of you wearing glitter of any kind. No. Or, we were uh, buying supplies for a pool party. Not hot right? pants or anything. Uh, we were having a bunch of people. We're moving out right. of my complex, right? Yeah. And there was a community pool, yeah. and we're not going to have a community pool anymore. And so we were like, well, let's have a bunch of friends over. And we had a big old nice little f- pool party. Right. You didn't come. Thank you very much. I was out um, of town. I couldn't. <laughs> I was Andrea came and it was lovely. Heartbroken to miss um, it. But we were, you know, we were offering up, you know, grill and, and, you know, we bought a bunch of sides and we were saying, bring your own meat and la la la. So we were, we were there uh, looking through the hot dogs. We were trying <laughs> to find the Hebrew Nationals uh, because they are wonderful. Uh-huh. And they didn't have any. So oh. we settled for Nathan's. Okay. Good. Sure. Good hot dogs. You're not going Oscar Mayer. You're going, you're going. We're going so, if we're gonna get hot dogs, if we're if we're if we're taking that step in our life, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get good hot dogs. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So we're minding our own business, just kind of discussing which ones to get. Right. And I think we that was about the moment when we settled on the Nathans, and uh, this guy walks by and he's like, "Fucking faggots!" God damn it! And it's like, and he he was like, "Watch out, here come the faggots," or something like that. It was something just stupid and inane or whatever. And it, and 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 Dave was the one who kind of heard it first, and uh, and he he yells something out, "fuck you" or whatever. Um, and then I became very aware of the situation, and I was like, "fuck you, you piece of shit," <laughs> <laughs> which is and great. Not my finest moment. Oh but... no, no, that's fine. <laughs> I think that's fine. But then this woman comes running out of one of the aisles, right? And she's like, what just happened? So I tell her the whole thing. And, and she's like, point him out to me. Point him. And, I, and at this point, I'm seriously just like, I do not know what's go- what she's go about to do. <laughs> but I, yes, I will point him out. Because <laughs> so you want to see that, does, I I that train wreck curious. happen. I was kind of curious. And she's going to go yell at him. I didn't know. Uh, but I, so I, we walk down to you know the end of the area and point down the aisle. And, uh, and she's like, oh, well. There was this guy. I thought it was this other guy because there was this uh, there was this guy in a MAGA hat who was yelling at and got in a fight with somebody else, and he starts calling him a faggot. And she's like, "I just what is going on? This is Salt Lake City." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and yeah, you must understand. Oh. Like as I've told this story, people are like. I'm going to say the name of the store just for, like, the locals. They're like, you were at Harmon's? That happened happened at Harmon's? Like, (laughs) (laughs) a hippie yelled faggot at you at the Harmon? Like, like, it wasn't a hippie, but, like, you know, just people were projecting, like, who's at the Harmon's? Right. Who's at the Harmon's? Yeah. And, uh, anyway. I once bumped into former uh, Republican governor of the state, uh, what, John Huntsman. At Harmon's? At Harmon's. Downtown at, Harmon's? At that Harmon's. Everybody goes that Harmon's. Everybody goes that Harmon's. Yeah. Including I mean, gay bashers. Including... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, the guy continues to mutter off and... And there... I don't know. Like, I I sort of ended up sort of taking pity on him more than anything. Yeah. That was my perspective. Like, Dave was really riled up. Yeah. Like, he... He he wanted to, like we, because we saw as we were leaving the parking garage and we were kind of rounding the corner. We saw him and he was waiting to cross the street, and uh, <laughs> he wanted to yell stuff at him. And I was like, no, no, man, no. Yeah, that's just that that's not the way I want to play this. Well, you know? I'm I'm glad that okay. First of all, uh, I'm glad that you're okay, and I'm glad that he didn't. Uh, he I was unfazed because it wasn't a, a physical thing at all. Right, you didn't and feel so, any menace. No, from and I and I, I seriously, within like thirty seconds after sort of the initial shock of it, because it's been a while. I mean, I got called faggot by some homeless guy during Pride. Oh, but you you just write that off. It's yeah. Pride, and yeah, so you, you you look around you, Mister. Sort of everybody's gay yeah. right now, and it, it's like what the it was some mentally ill homeless guy. Right. I just wasn't gonna like it. That didn't really affect me either. I think I probably said the exact same line fuck you you piece of shit it's uh, it's my go-to it's a go-to um and uh but you know i mean to be honest been called a faggot in passing in public twice in 
two and a half weeks, two yeah. weeks, two weeks. And it's a little weird yeah, to have not had sort of that experience in a very long time and to have had it, to have had it be such a limited experience in my adult life. Right. Right. That like, it was really kind of jarring and, and, uh, I mean, it, it definitely makes you take a step back and go, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, what, what the hell is, is yeah, going on? I, I mean, as we've the, the because it, I never, ex- twice in two weeks. Right. I mean, that's where I'm at. Yeah, right? totally. Which is, I mean, how great is it that it's that, that it's so rare that this feels like this bizarre anomaly? Right. But yeah, I mean, this is not an okay thing to have happen. No. Uh, and it's scary that it's, that it is happening again. We, you know, we've talked about this, but, but yeah, the, the, the assholes are emboldened right now in our country and we got to be careful about that. I thought, I mean, you and I were joking around about this when you told me this story. Um, I, I think we should come up with, uh, better things to yell. (laughs) Well, the one that I, I, so here's the deal. I, I don't like that my reaction so often is fuck you you piece of shit okay right like i, I don't like that right i don't like that it's my not go-to ideal. is fuck you yeah I, I i would rather i mean he deserves it he no i don't feel bad no. that i said it no i feel bad that i don't have a better retort uh, you need a good I, line i need a good line so let's yeah so let's so, brainstorm up some stuff here somebody mutters faggot i honestly think that it should just be like well yeah I mean, the, the, generally, I want my response to just be like, yeah, what, the, what, what are you talking about? Duh. Yeah. Well, duh. Doi. Do, do doi. I'm bringing back doi. 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 Uh, doi. <laughs> I like that. I think there's also... That's just, because the, 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 the benefit of that is that it's just like, like he's the idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah, tell me something I don't know. Well, and also, right. like, yes, society has accepted this now. Yeah. You're on the wrong side of this. Yeah. Um... I feel like yelling something like child molester <laughs> could have a certain satisfaction. I don't know that that's quite it. Yeah. I mean, I, I get where you're going Two on the nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, you could do something. You could try to cut to now. Oh, by the way, I want to mention we're not suggesting that you do this. If you feel like you're in any danger or anything oh, like no. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, guy, I was I was in a very public space where, believe me, the moment this guy was out of sight, uh, just I spotted like two or three super swishy gay guys just walking around. Right. Right. Like if there had been a kerfuffle, uh, he would have been the one in trouble. He would have been swished store. right I, out of that store. No, but at that particular store, the woman who oh, came yeah. to running. Oh, right, yeah. and the pe- And people like turn and look because, I mean, I said it loudly enough that that portion of the store heard me. Right. 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 They didn't uh, hear so him. So don't, don't put they yourself. They heard me. The, it is our official uh, policy here at TGIA. Don't, don't put yourself in danger with anything that we've said. Anyway. Oh, if, if he'd gotten physical, Jesus fucking Christ. Ugh. Like, there would have been the initial reaction of just like, what the fuck? I don't know what Dave would have done, for one. Yeah. But like, we had a basket full of shit. Yeah. Right? Like, that thing would have gotten swung around. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, anyway, uh, I I think I I think one way you can go. You you tell me how you feel about this uh, is to try and wither them a little bit with <laughs> with something like you know like something along the lines of like being mean won't fill your empty heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just yeah, that or, one. You got to have your finger out. Yeah, you got to waggle your finger when you say that. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Or or I'm sorry, your dad didn't love you. You know what I mean? Like something. The, like I'm that. sorry for you is a pretty good one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Go down that road. Yeah. yeah. Or I mean, I mean, I suppose you could you could just stand there and yell, "Hate crime, hate crime! Call nine one one." See if you can get them to run. Uh, hate crime. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Please. Man. I don't know. Like it's such a weird thing. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's 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 disappointing in humanity. Yeah, is what it is. <sighs> yeah. What, what do you do, Dan? I, pfft, how do I know? I mean, I'm you, I am a straight white man. I don't know how to handle any of this stuff except all, that. Like, let me tell here's, you. Here's here's what I will say. 
All of you straight white men out there, if you see any of this shit happening, we got to stand up. Yeah. We no, got to stand up for, for our for our our brothers and sisters of color. We got to stand up for our LGBTQ plus uh, people. Mm-hmm. It's a, you know, there is, there's a, there needs to be a cost to the privilege that we've enjoyed. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that the, that is actually very important. Yeah. Uh, I think we, as, as those who enjoy the privilege right. probably need to start standing up. Yeah. Well, I, and I honestly think the, 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 for me, the best thing that I could do with that was to go to the pool party, right? Yeah. And have a good time with my friends, right? And to laugh about it. Yeah. We told the story all afternoon and just laughed and laughed and laughed about it. And so it was just like, that's what you do. Yeah. You don't let it really truly affect you. That And that's and But so you, key. Do, you do let it add a... Um, another layer of armor you 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 take it and you say you know what i've been i've been through that i've been through it a few times in my life of of having this shock of somebody feeling like they have to for whatever reason uh comment in an insulting manner about who i am right right to me right unprovoked i haven't done anything i'm just standing there right right and I'll, i'll you just let it build you up Right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the mo- if you're capable of it, if I mean, you know, if if this hits you hard and you you know if 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 something happens and it hits you hard, that's fine. You you know you got to deal with your things right. your way. But it, but the best revenge you can take is to live a happy life. Yeah, is to find a way not to let it not to let it get to you, right. and to live your best life. Right, yeah. that's the best thing you can you can do. Yep, because fuck them. Yeah, cause because because fuck, fuck him, that piece of shit. <laughs> That's what. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, if you guys have a good line that you think should be yelled at yeah. homophobes Ugh. and or racists or whatever, please feel free to send them in to us. Uh, we promise we don't make any promises as to what we'll do with them, uh, but we may yell them at someone. We Who may knows? yell them at you guys. Yeah, we may. We'll try them out. We'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, write a, write to us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Indeed. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGIA Atheist, and click that like button. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join it as a closed group. We'll let you in. It's awesome. Yeah. It's totally worth checking out. Also, if you're on Reddit or Twitter, uh, TGIA Atheist is how you'll find us on those. Yeah. Hey, you know who's great? Mackenzie, who does our Facebook page. She is astounding. And uh, Danny and Amy are awesome. They're ma- moderators on the Members Only Lounge. Uh, you got some people that are great. Yeah, the the Red Hot Red Rock Hot Club. Yeah, uh, they're awesome for doing our music. Yeah. Thanks so much for letting us use the, your music. All yeah, these years. And also Gordon Johnston uh, plays some music on the show. Too. Yeah, you, you're all just peaches, and we love you so much. And we love you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.